What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining to you guys exactly what the server message block protocol is. So let's get into it. All right. So the server message block protocol, this is a foundational network file sharing protocol used extensively in modern computing environments. It enables applications and users to read and write to files and request services from server programs within a network. And in this video, I'm going to provide an in-depth look at the SMB protocol, exploring its history, architecture, operation, and practical applications. All right, so the SMB protocol, this is a network communication protocol primarily used for providing shared access to files, printers, and serial ports. It also offers an authenticated inter-process communication mechanism. And originally, SMB was developed at IBM in the 1980s, and it has since evolved through contributions from various companies, most notably Microsoft, which has integrated SMB into its Windows operating systems. So the history of SMB, this can be traced back to the mid 80s when it was first developed by IBM. However, its widespread adoption began when Microsoft started using SMB in its land manager and subsequently in Windows for work groups. And Microsoft then extended the protocol, calling its version the common internet file system. And over the years, SMB has gone through several revisions. So you have SMB 1.0, which was the original version used in early Windows operating systems. You got SMB SMB 2.0. This was introduced with Windows Vista and Windows Server 2008. And this version brought significant improvements in performance and security. You got 2.1. This came with Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008, adding new features and optimizations. You got SMB 3.0. This was launched with Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012. And this version included enhancements for cloud storage, virtualization, and performance. And then we got SMB 3.1. And this was included in Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016, focusing on security enhancements such as pre-authentication integrity. All right, next let's talk about the SMB architecture. So SMB, it operates using a client server model. So here's a closer look at its architecture. You have the client and the client, this component initiates the connection to the server and requests access to files or services. And then we have the server and the server component, it listens for client requests and provides the requested resources or services. And also SMB communications, they typically involve the following elements. So we just talked about the SMB client and the SMB server. And there's another element which is called network transport. So SMB, it can operate over different network protocols, including NetBIOS over TCP IP, direct hosted SMB over TCP IP, and the NetBEUI protocol. So exactly how does SMB work? So SMB enables file and resource sharing by facilitating a series of client server interactions. And the workflow generally follows these steps right here. So first the session is established. So this is where the client initiates the session by connecting to the server using a transport protocol. Then the server responds and an SMB session is established. The next step is authentication. So the client provides authentication credentials, and then the server verifies the credentials granting access if they are valid. Then we have resource access. So the client requests access to a shared resource, such as a file or a printer. And then the server checks permissions and provides access if the client is authorized. Then we have data transfer. So the client and server exchange commands and responses to read, write, or modify the resource. Then the data is transferred using SMB messages encapsulated in network packets. And then we have session termination. So once the client has finished accessing the resources, it sends a command to close the session. And then the server acknowledges the termination, which then ends the session. And here are some of the key features of SMB. So some of the key features that it offers that enhances functionality and utility are as follows. So obviously we have file sharing. So SMB allows clients to read, write, and manage files on a remote server as if they were local. There's printer sharing, which enables multiple clients to use network printers seamlessly. There's network browsing. So clients, they can browse the network to discover available SMB servers and shared resources. There's access control. 
So it provides robust access control mechanisms, which allow admins to set permissions on shared resources. There's this thing called opportunistic locking. So this feature improves performance by allowing clients to cache file data locally while maintaining consistency. There's message signing to ensure the integrity and authenticity of messages exchanged between clients and servers. And then there's encryption. So SMB 3.0 and later versions, they support encryption, which enhances the security of data that is transferred over the network. Next, let's look at the SMB versions and their enhancements. So as mentioned earlier, SMB has evolved through several versions, each bringing enhancements and new features. So SMB 1.0, once again, this was the original version, which provided basic file and printer sharing capabilities, but it had its limitations in performance and security, leading to the development of newer versions. There was SMB 2.0, so this was introduced with Windows Vista. SMB 2.0, it offered significant improvements in performance, scalability, and security, and it reduced the number of commands and subcommands from over 100 to 19, which simplified the protocol. Then there's SMB 2.1, and this was added with Windows 7, and this version included improvements like improved energy efficiency and support for larger MTU sizes. Then there's SMB 3.0, so this was released with Windows 8, and SMB 3.0 just brought features such as SMB Direct, SMB Multi-Channel, and SMB Encryption, and it offered enhanced support for virtualization and cloud environments. And then we have SMB 3.1.1, and this was included in Windows 10. And this one introduced pre-authentication integrity and improved encryption algorithms. And then it also focused on enhancing security and performance. All right, so let's talk about the benefits of the server message block protocol. So it offers numerous benefits, which makes it a preferred protocol for network file sharing. So there's ease of use. So it is user friendly, allowing seamless file and printer sharing with minimal configuration. There's cross platform compatibility. So SMB is supported by various operating systems, including Windows, Mac, and Linux, ensuring interoperability in diverse environments. There's enhanced performance. So newer SMB versions, they provide significant performance improvements, especially in high latency and high bandwidth networks. There's security. So SMB includes robust security features such as authentication, encryption, and message signing to protect data and ensure integrity. And then there's scalability. So it can scale to support large networks with numerous clients and servers, making it suitable for enterprise environments. And next, let's talk about some practical applications of the server message block protocol. So SMB is widely used in various scenarios to facilitate resource sharing and collaboration. So you can find it in corporate environments where it enables employees to share files, access network printers, and collaborate on projects. You can find it in home networks where it is commonly used to share files and printers amongst family members and devices. It's in educational institutions that allow for students and faculty to have access to shared resources such as course materials and network printers. You can find it being used in data centers for storage access and management, and it also supports virtualization and cloud services. And you can find SMB being utilized in media streaming applications to share and access media files across devices seamlessly. So exactly how do you go about implementing SMB? Well, this involves configuring both the server and client components to enable resource sharing. So here's a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to get that cracking. First thing you wanna do is set up the SMB server. So you wanna install and configure the SMB server software. On Windows, this involves enabling the file and printer sharing feature. Then you create the shared folders and set appropriate permissions to control access. Then you wanna configure the SMB client. So you wanna ensure that SMB client support is enabled on the devices that will access the shared resources. Then you wanna map the network drives or set up network locations to access shared folders and printers. Next, you want to set up authentication and security. So implementing authentication mechanisms to control access to shared resources is crucial. And this can include local accounts, domain authentication, or other methods. And then you want to enable the SMB encryption and message signing to enhance that security. Next, we have monitoring and maintenance. So you want to regularly monitor SMB actively to ensure that the shared resources are accessible and secure. And then you want to update SMB configurations and software to address any vulnerabilities so you can improve its performance. 
And next, let's talk about the challenges and considerations of SMB. So while SMB offers numerous benefits, there are also challenges and considerations you have to keep in mind. The first one is security risk. So older versions of SMB, especially SMB 1.0, they are known to have vulnerabilities that can be exploited by attackers. So it is crucial to use the latest SMB versions and implement security best practices. You have performance overhead issues. So SMB encryption and message signing, this can introduce performance overhead so you want to balance security and performance based on these specific use cases you have compatibility issues so you want to ensure compatibility between different smb versions and operating systems to avoid connectivity and performance issues and then there's network configuration issues so you want proper network configuration including firewalls and network segmentation because this is essential to ensure efficient and secure smb operations and finally, in conclusion, the server message block protocol. This is a cornerstone of network file and resource sharing, providing a reliable and efficient means for clients to access shared resources on the network. With its rich feature set, cross-platform compatibility, and robust security mechanisms, SMB remains a vital protocol in both enterprise and home environments. So understanding and implementing SMB effectively, this can significantly enhance collaboration, resource sharing, and operational efficiency in a network environment. And as technology continues to evolve, SMB will likely remain a key player in the realm of network communication, adapting to meet the growing demands for performance, security, and scalability.